for those about to rock or I salute you. Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Oaks and today I have a camera review for you and a very special one at that. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Minolta XE7. Now this camera is special in the sense that it was the first SLR to come out of the Leica Minolta Alliance, making use of the Copal Square shutter, but it's also the camera that got me back into using manual focus Minolta gear. I started off in Minolta, I had a Hymatic 7S, so I went to an SRT 102 and then an X7A before hopping into the Nikon line of cameras. But after I rediscovered all my Minolta glass, which I had thankfully saved, um, it was my good friend Bill Smith who suggested the XE7. Now, you'll remember last year I reviewed the XD11 and that camera actually came from Bill. And if you missed that review, you can click up above and that will take you to that video review. It is a fantastic camera, but I've always loved semi-automatic aperture priority for my manual focus cameras. I guess that's why I merged so well with the XC7, um, the Nikon FE, FE2, F3, you name it. My manual focus preference is aperture priority. But this is just an amazing camera, so I figured it was worthy of review. So before I get into the actual walking and shooting, let's head back to the studio. I'll give you a brief background about this camera's heritage, where it sits in the Minolta lineup, give you a tour of the camera itself, and overview some of the functionality. All right, I'll see you back here soon. The Minolta XE7 came at a time when camera manufacturers were starting to embrace electronics as part of their camera systems. And before entering a technology sharing agreement with Lights, Minolta had the idea for the X-Series. That would bring them a professional system camera that was becoming quite popular with the release of the popular F, the follow-up F2, and now Canon's offering the F1. But the X1 had its problems, so when Minolta entered that technology sharing agreement with Lights, both decided to base their first SLR release on the X1 chassis. Lights would go on to produce the Leica Flex R3, while Minolta would produce the XE. The XE itself is a fantastic camera and it used all the technology improvements that Minolta had released before, including the color light contrast sensor, an early form of matrix or averaging metering, which really gives this camera that bulletproof metering capability. Now, the only similar piece of technology other than the look of the camera itself was the Copal Square shutter. That meant that both companies no longer had to build a shutter in-house, they could rely on a third-party device. Other than that, the two cameras were wildly different and were both made by the respective companies. So Minolta only built the XE7 and Lights only produced the R3. The two cameras really weren't interchangeable. They were more like cousins than actual twins. Production of the XE7 lasted until 1977, so it was relatively a short-lived camera model, but one that is still reliable today despite its age. So let's take a closer look at the XE7. And here it is. This is the brilliant XE7. You can see that Minolta design lineage. I love that they still have the original text font here on the faceplate and that nice bold XE7 here on the front cover. You'll find this either labeled XE if it's an Asian or Japanese market camera, XE1 for Europe, and mine is of course from North America. These were only available in black. The black and chrome version is also the XE5, a close relation to it, but slightly lower spec. So let's take an overall view of the camera. You have here, of course, the front lens mount with the lovely 28 millimeter. On the side here, this is your self timer and it is adjustable. 
Over on this side here, you have your depth of field preview button, and it's actually a plunger that comes out and goes back in. On the opposite side, you have your lens release button. You have a sync cable setting for either X for electronic or FP for old school flash bulbs. Yes, it is still being used flash bulbs in the 1970s, and they did have a shutter a flash unit that would work on this camera that used flash bulbs. Up on this one side, this little thing here is your battery check light. And if the battery is good, the light will illuminate red when you pull down this lever. Up at the top, you have just a standard hot shoe, which will work with any electronic flash or again, those flash bulbs. On this side, you have your, your um, film speed indicator and you release it with that button here and that adjusts it like that. On the other side, you have your EV compensation, either minus two to plus two in one stop in increments. And that is released um, through a safety catch here. On this side, you have your shutter speed wheel. It also acts as setting it into auto mode. Now this camera only has aperture priority. So this will automatically pick the shutter based on the aperture you set on the ring. Nice, big, heavy um, shutter release with the standard threaded cable for remote release and your throw. Now the one thing that you will see that is missing from the top is a shutter counter. And that is here on the back, right here. And just above it you have your film loaded sensor. You have your standard on off switch here. It is a bit reversed. I find it funny that off is up and on is down. Usually it's the other way around, but at least it's clearly labeled. You have here your viewfinder shade, so if you're doing long exposures at night, you can keep the uh, you can keep stray light from entering that way. And you have a DIN ASA thing and your film memo. To open up the back, you simply pull up the film rewind, and here it is. You have that brilliant Copal Square shutter. On the bottom, you have your battery. This takes a pair of LR44, so readily accessible. You have your tripod socket and your rewind release. The one thing you will notice here is that there is no option for a motor drive. That is one thing that this camera lacks that Leica um, put into a updated R3, the R3 mod. All right, so let's take a closer look and see how to use this camera. So the first thing you'll want to do if you've purchased this camera and it doesn't have batteries is to open up your, your battery compartment. Always check this to make sure that there's no corrosion. And if you want to make sure that there is batteries and they're good, simply pull down this. And if it indicates red, then you have good batteries. The battery compartment is found here. As I mentioned before, this takes LR44 batteries and you can use just a standard coin, a Canadian quarter or nickel will work fine. Or if you have one, a five yen paste, um, piece will be able to take care of that for you. Lens mounting, equally simple. The release is here, you press it and you turn it until the red dot is aligned to the center. You'll feel it click and then you can pull it off. Similarly, mount that red with the top of the CLC sensor and twist it clockwise until it locks. Focusing is done easy. There is a split level prism inside here. It's a big bright viewfinder, so focusing is simple even if you have glasses or terrible eyesight. I've never missed focus on this camera unless I've made a big mistake. From here you have your after settings. These are in full click stop, so it's uh, nice and there is actually an illuminator window so you can actually see what your aperture is inside the viewfinder. Setting your film speed, you have options from ASA 12 to ASA 3200. You simply press down the silver release and then you can adjust it from there. And there are partial stops along here as well. Your shutter speed dial, again, there's a security release to take it off of auto. You have your X, this will, um, so if you're using flash, either electronic or flash bulb, set it to X and that will X sync your flash and you'll be good to go. Other than that, you have bulb mode, four seconds all the way to one one thousandth. 
In the shutter, in the viewfinder window, you will find that there is a match needle shutter speed scale inside. When it's in auto mode, there'll be an A indicator and the needle will simply indicate the shutter speed that the camera has picked. In manual mode, there will be a green indicator that will indicate what shutter speed you need to set to and then you simply do it from there and the needle and you just simply match it up. Nice and easy. You have your shutter release. This works really well. It is a bit difficult so a soft release would make a nice addition here. And then of course you have your frame advance here. It's a nice good pull, really smooth. This camera won't fire without batteries, so you need to make sure that there is good fresh batteries installed and the camera is on when you want to use it. You can also check up here if the camera is loaded, there'll be a sort of an orange indicator that will slowly move across as you advance the film. Once you are done your roll, you depress the uh, rewind lever here and then it's simply a manual rewind. And then you pull this up and that will pop open the back. So let's take this out into the field and get this loaded. Okay, so today I am here in Oakville, Ontario, in a part of the city that I don't normally go, but I figure, you know what, a little bit of change of scenery is always good. I'm shooting my W Rockor X, 28 millimeter f 2.8 lens and I'm going to be shooting Adox CHS 102 and developing it in Spur HRX. When I first picked up the XC7, it felt familiar, nostalgic even, and that's not from using a Leica Flex R3, rather from my first SLR, the SRT-102. Sure, the XC7 is heavy, a bit bulky, so a proper strap is a must, but it has a brutalist vibe, but also a touch of refinement. From loading film to composing the image, everything is simple. The viewfinder is bright for its age and contains all the needed information. Plus it's match needle metering, and I love match needle metering. The film advance, well, a little long, it's smooth, and the shutter release has a satisfying click when tripped. The XE7 is a camera that asks to be used, and while there are smaller and lighter cameras later on in the X series, the XE7 is a camera at that moment in between when Minolta is still trying to get their bearings in this new world between the mechanical and the electronic. It is a camera that if you see it you want to use it, if only to try it to see if you like the format and form factor. As brilliant as this camera is to use, it's not just about its usability, it's about the optics as well. And Rockor optics are legendary, and the best part is, is that at this point within Minolta's history, they started to gain access to a lot of technology and lens designs that came directly from light. So they began to integrate those as part of the technology sharing agreement that the two companies forged. And I have to say that I haven't met a rock or lens that I didn't like. And I don't have as big a collection for my Minolta manual focus as I do for, say, my uh, Nikon set, but I have some pretty sweet optics that I love to use with this camera. So let's head back to the studio. I can share some examples of the lenses I have and talk a little bit more about them and give you some ideas of what lenses to pick up if you're looking to put together an XC7 system. All right, I'm gonna finish this roll and I'll see you back at the park in a bit. Okay, so let's talk lenses here for a moment. 
The Minolta XE7 uses a modification of the original Minolta SR mount, the MC mount. Now this allows for the lens to communicate with the camera what its aperture is set to, and the XE7 leverages that to allow you to use both manual exposure mode and semi-automatic aperture priority mode. But the best part is, is that there's actually two variants that you can use with the XE7. You can use the original MC lenses, but you can also use the MD lenses. Now the MD lenses also allow full program mode in cameras like the X700 or the XD11. But most importantly is that you don't have to splurge and get those unless you're planning on updating or you already have one such camera. You can bring those MD lenses down and not have to worry about it. But really, what sort of lenses do I like to use with my camera? Well, let's start off with the obvious choice. The most used lens that I used with my XC7 is the Rock or X 45mm f2. Now I have the MD version which is brilliant because I actually got this with an X700. Unfortunately it died but I've been able to use it on my XC7 perfectly. This is a brilliant lens, great for just general purpose walking around. It's really the only camera system that I use the 45mm on. Most of the time I go with a 35mm version but I haven't been able to find one for an affordable price. And the best part is this lens is pretty inexpensive on the used market. The next one is of course the 28mm f2.8. This is a great wide angle option if you don't want to go like crazy and get a 24mm lens. Again, super low profile, great for both um, small form factor and larger Minolta cameras like the XC7. Mine is again an MD version, same camera kit that that X700 I had that kicked the bucket. Um, brilliant optics, nice and fast f2.8, great for architecture, great for landscape work, and again, doesn't break the bank. Now, no camera kit would be complete without a 50 millimeter, and this is actually the only MC lens I have in it, but it is an updated version, and that would be the Rockor XPF um, 50 millimeter f1.7. This is a great budget lens. This one actually dates itself back to an even older camera I had, the X7A. And it's just, again, it's a brilliant catch-all lens, excellent quality. You can't really go wrong with it. And since it's not an f1.4 version, it's not going to break the bank. And finally, no lens kit is complete without a short telephoto lens. And there's a lot of different um, things on this one, but I prefer the uh, Tele-Rock or PF, the 135 millimeter f2.8. I never use this often. I never came into a situation with it, um, except at Disney World when I was, was uh, taking the, uh, the safari at Animal Kingdom. I actually mounted this on a digital camera. And so this lens didn't see a lot of work. And again, I'm not really a fan of the 135 millimeter, but this lens is fantastic. People argue online about the sharpness of it, but really for a budget short telephoto, you really can't go wrong with it. And the best part is, is that if you use modern mirrorless camera systems, all these lenses work really great when you adapt it. So I actually have a Photo Deox Pro MD to NEX. So this will work on the Sony E mount. I've used this on my A6000, but it will work fine on your A7 series. The one thing you do want to go with is if you do go with the Photo Deox adapter, you want to go with the Pro version. It has a better lock and actually has a tripod mount on it because it will radically change your camera center of gravity, especially with the longer, heavier ones. But you don't have to limit yourself to these lenses. Um, Minolta produced some amazing zoom lenses, even better prime lenses for this camera kit. And some of the zoom lenses and some of the prime lenses later on were built with Leica lens designs at the Minolta factory. Um, the one thing you do want to watch out for, you want to try and get the X version of these lenses. They do have a little bit better coating and give you better color rendition. 
All right, that's enough for the lenses. Let's head back out into the field and we can wrap this up. And there we have it. That's the Minolta XC7. This is an absolutely brilliant camera and one of the more affordable ones within the um, Leica Minolta early X series cameras. You can find these online for about $160 to $180 and that usually comes with a lens. Not always a rock core lens, but good chance you'll get the 51.7 with yours. Of course, you do have to watch out. There are some that are under $100. Those, unfortunately, probably don't work, but you just might get lucky. And if not, if your XE7 breaks, then you can find a parts camera for dirt cheap and hope that the part that's broken on yours is working on the parts model. Now, repairing these cameras can be difficult these days. The mechanical side of things are easily fixed. The Copal shutter is easily adjusted. It's the electronics that you do have to watch out for. And these cameras are starting to get a little bit old. But the best part is, is by the time you're watching this, this camera will be in the hands of a new owner along with all my lenses. My good friend, Allie, down in Florida. And I'm looking forward to seeing what she thinks of the XE7. And if you're not subscribed to her channel or aren't a common visitor to her website and blog, you can find those in the description below. I highly, highly recommend Ali's content. It is fantastic. That's about covers it. I hope this has inspired you to pick up a Minolta manual focus camera. They truly are brilliant, no matter which one you go with. Until next time, my name's Alex Louse. Get out there, stay safe, and remember, you gotta pass it on.